everybody welcome back to my channel Tominze. my name is tommy and today i'm coming at you all natural in my bonnet because i'm gonna turn myself into what i think i would look like if i was in a tim Burton movie fair warning that the only tim Burton movies i've actually seen uh, Alice in Wonderland and The Corpse Bride. So that's where I'm going to be pulling most of my inspiration like from. But I've also seen there was a TikTok challenge going around where people turn themselves into Tim Burton characters. I'm going to start with hair because hair tends to take the longest for me. I have 4C natural hair. I recently had two corners in so my hair is very like curly but not like curly. It's curly like in a braid out kind of sense. This is what my hair looks like right now. I was gonna do a bun like Victoria from Corpse Bride, but then I saw my hair and I was like, I can't waste braid out hair. But instead, I'm gonna do a half up, half down kind of style. Okay, I kind of like that. Do you see that? Do you see the vision? So that's what we're gonna do. Five minutes later. So maybe I'll do a bun. I don't love how this looks. This is what I look like. Um, part of what the TikTok trend was about was about POCs and like how they would look in gothic media. And I feel like part of that is the natural hair. And I think sometimes I'm not used to seeing my natural hair in different styles. And so I think it looks bad, but it doesn't. It's just like a different style. And so Maybe if we had more representation of seeing what natural hair could look like in those styles, it would look less weird. <laughs> like I would be more used to seeing that. But right now, I think this is okay for the character. I have the hair, which didn't take as long as I thought it would. So now I'm going to move on to makeup. The first thing I saw people do is kind of pale their skin because some of his characters are dead. It made sense that you pale down your skin so i'm going to use actually my eyeshadow primer and i feel like what you need is a light covering so i'm gonna use this nyx um eyeshadow base which is already white i actually tried this yesterday just to make sure i knew what i was doing yesterday i tried to use a beauty blender and it was just a waste of time you can really just rub this on your face like just like like it's cream and also it's okay if it's patchy because skin is patchy and it, by the time you add out all the other things we're gonna be doing, the patchiness won't show that much anyway. Just make sure that you are not, you know, changing your entire skin tone. You just want to make it look like your skin tone, but pale. So, not too much. Oh, we're here. How are you guys doing? I know for some people, exams are over. And for other people, exams are just beginning. So everybody's like in a different spot. We're gonna put on concealer to bring back some color. I know we're going for pale, but I still want to look kind of like an, a living human being. And for that, I'm gonna use my normal concealer shade um, to bring back some color. So I want to explain some of the concealing things I did. So I know this kind of looks like basic concealing. So I'm trying to make my face look longer and more angular. I already have kind of a long face, so it's a little bit easier. I'm doing highlight here and here so that it feels longer. And around my nose, I put it right outside my nose and right in the middle so that my nose looks really skinny because the shadows are gonna be right there. Finally, I put it here underneath my eyes, but I didn't put it right underneath my eyes because I still want my bags to show you know use what you have so i have really good bags when i tried this yesterday i noticed that the discoloration in skin was showing especially over in these spots because there's not much product on them so to even it out i'm gonna put some a little bit further down than i usually would and i like to bring it up straight to my high points i'm talking so makeup -y right now I promise yesterday was so helpful like I usually don't do run throughs of my makeup but I did yesterday and it was so helpful to me like I know what I'm doing now and that's such a good feeling we're gonna set the face so just use some face powder 
I wanted to show you the natural contour that's kind of developing on my face. See, kind of that line that's already there and I haven't put any contour down, but we're gonna intensify it with contour. Okay, so for contour, we're gonna use mixtures of dark brown and purple. For dark skin, I think purple, or for all skin, but I think it looks really good on dark skin is when you add the purple undertones. Purple looks more like that bruisey, um, bruisey look. From this palette, I'm gonna use this and this as my contour shades. So I'm gonna go in with the lighter one because it's always good to go in with a light hand. I'm gonna take it from here, bring it all the way down. And I'm actually gonna bring it almost like a, like the skull kind of shape so that it looks really gaunt like that. Because it's such a small brush, everything is very concentrated. So I like to go in with a bigger brush to just like diffuse everything. So my camera has been out of focus for a minute. I'm gonna voice over that part. Hopefully it makes it shorter for you as well. But even though it's kind of blurry, you can still see what I did, which was I contoured around my face like I would contour normally, maybe a little bit harsher. And then I contoured my nose to be super tiny. And I want a really skinny nose. Like all his characters have very skinny, almost like it doesn't look real. So you want that really fake but skinny illusion. To achieve that, I really like to bring up my nose contour all the way into my eyebrows or my eye socket um, so that it looks like it's all just one shadow. So I'm going to move on to eyes quickly and swiftly before we run into any more issues. I'm using a white liner and I'm just going to um, do the, the under eyes, the, the white liner under your eyes. So you won't see this, but I'm going to come back. Okay, my eyes are tight lined. I don't know, we all probably experience this, but I find it really difficult to tight line my eyes. My eyes start to get irritated. This is also my problem with contact lenses. It's just like putting things close to my eye. It's just difficult. Now we're gonna add shadow back into the eyes. This is super fun. I love this. I'm gonna use my Frozen palette from Colourpop. Um, and in the Frozen palette, there's actually a color in purple. A really deep purple that's like only slightly warm. I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna put that in my eyeshadow socket, like right about here. And for me personally, I want it to be like a circle shape around my eye. So I'm gonna put it here and connect it with the nose contour. So that's what I'm doing here. And it can be really messy, to be honest. It does not have to be. Neat. Another thing I like to do is with the same brush, I'm not going to clean it or anything, but I'm actually going to take like this lighter shade and I'm going to put it all over my lid to make it look like I have bigger bulbous eyes. I put it right here. I'm going to move on to bags. I like to go in with the dark brown that I had for my contour shade first. And what I do is I trace my real bags. Right here, I have a bag right here, if you can see that. And I'm going to crease right underneath it and you will kind of see it on your face like it will be very apparent because you're enhancing what you already kind of have if you don't have bags good for you <laughs> but i have plenty so i have lots to work with so i'm gonna use the purple to mix it to fit it out a little bit and i'm just mixing it with the brown this video has legitimately a thousand different camera angles Thank you for your patience. So I did two eyes, um, and by now you can kind of see I have the effect of a Tim Burton character. I'm gonna do eyeliner, and what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do differently about this eyeliner is instead of it going into a wing, I'm actually gonna make my eyeliner go down. So I'm gonna slope it down. It's very subtle. I'm gonna bend forward, but if you can kind of see that, you're gonna obviously put your eyelash following that line. What's cool about Tim Burton makeup is that you can make it look super messy because that's kind of the vibe mess so for eyebrows is really easy you're gonna use black if you have black hair like me you're gonna draw like that little boop that boop that he has going on okay i think i got it for the highlight i'm gonna use this cool pearl toned i'm still black so i can't use like straight white but i'm gonna use this pearly cool toned white 
as a highlight and honestly the highlight is most important on your nose to complete this illusion we have going on then if you want you can add the highlight to the top of your cheekbones um if you want for lips i'm going to use the purple shade as a lip liner and i'm gonna fill out my cupid's bow like this i'm just gonna do the top and also the bottom and i'm not gonna do the edges This is like a new dish. I'm gonna put that around my lips. And I'm gonna leave the center kind of not much. And then I'm gonna put this in the center. So like the top center and the bottom center. And I'm gonna blend it out a little bit for that. And that's it. We're done with makeup, however long it took. I'm gonna change into my clothes. So I just popped on this white dress that I've had for a while. It was actually my old graduation dress, graduation party dress. It didn't really fit in then, but it kind of fits now. I think I look straight out of a gothic Tim Burton movie. I decided that I wanted to give my character a little bit of a backstory, a little bit of a day in the life of my, my character. I think you will really, really like it. So stick around if you want to watch that. But yeah, thank you so much if you got to the end of this video. If you want to see the pictures that I got from this look, they're on my Instagram at Tominze. I will put it somewhere on the screen. Um, I really like to do fun and immersive edits with my pictures so that it really looks like I'm in a Tim Burton movie. So I really love it if you go see them over there. And if you like my face, you like my content, Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more of this. And if you want to see when I post videos, you can also hit the notifications bell. But yeah, join us. That sounded really scary. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye bye. My name is Antonia Edgewater and every day I wear the same dress. I can't remember a time before it. My routine, well, it's like clockwork, isn't it? Get dressed, lace up my shoes, go downstairs and eat breakfast. Today it's porridge. Well, to be completely honest, it's always porridge. But in some ways, the warm familiarity is comforting. I always hurry through breakfast because if I have time, I'm allowed to read. I love my books. They take me out of these dreary walls to somewhere far away. But there's not much time for dreams. Antonia? Yes? Are you paying any attention? Oh, so sorry, Mr. O'Reilly. My governess, Miss Cardew, does not like it when I daydream. In the evenings, I dine with Uncle Jack. Sometimes we have guests and I greet them. I clap at their jokes. But we never leave this place. I'm certain there's something Uncle Jack isn't telling me. Sometimes, at night, I hear sounds around the castle. Ordinary enough, the rustle of wind, the clanging of a fallen pot. And it would be normal if it wasn't just me and my Uncle Jack here. I get the strange feeling that something might be watching me. Writing is the way I make sense of it all. I imagine stories behind the sounds. It makes it less scary. But I've never actually ever seen anything until I saw you. Who are you? And the answer to that? Well, that's another tale.